In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of Newton's method. So talk about what it is, why it's useful, and so on. What Newton's method is, is a method for solving equations numerically. And why is this useful? Well, let's go ahead and have a look at an example. In this example, we're interested in buying a $17,500 car, and we're being asked to pay for it for five years in monthly payments of $350 each. Well, is this a good deal? What interest rate does this actually amount to? Well, in order to figure out the actual interest rate you're being charged, the formula you'd have to solve is as shown here. So 50x times 1 plus x to the power 60 minus 1 plus x to the power 60 plus 1 equals 0. So we'd have to solve this for the interest rate x. Notice that x appears several times in the equation and in some cases uh, brackets are being raised to the power 60, so this would be an exceptionally difficult equation for us to solve. So how could we go ahead and do it? Well, you might try graphical approaches, but that assumes that you have graphical software available to you and you're able to read the graph accurately. Other options are to use numerical approaches, and Newton's method is one such approach. Now, this is just one application problem. There are numerous application problems because in the real world, it's often the case that you're not working with simple functions. In textbooks, sometimes you'll see examples where they talk about, oh, let's model this with an x squared, for example. But in the real world, the functions that we use for modeling might be quite complicated complicated, and hence the equations that arise based on these functions might be quite complicated as well and difficult to solve. And this applies regardless of which discipline you're in. So then, how might we solve something like this? How would we use Newton's method to help us? Well, let's consider the following graph, and we're trying to find the intercept here. So we start at some point x1, and whatever the tangent line is at x1, we go ahead and find we look at the point where the tangent line intersects the x-axis, and that becomes x2, our new point. Let's go ahead again and follow x2 up until we reach the graph, so finding f of x2 and specifically the tangent line there. So if we go ahead and find the tangent line at this new spot, what we end up with is the following. So notice the place where our tangent line intersects the x-axis, that's going to be x3, and it's getting closer to the actual intercept that we're looking for. So again, the idea is, start at some value x1, find the tangent line of the function at x1, wherever the tangent line intersects the x-axis, that's your new point x2. And so now you just repeat this process. Find the tangent line of the function at x2, wherever that intersects the x-axis, that's x3, and so on. And you keep doing this, and your x value should be approaching your intercept. So let's go ahead and look at a few more examples that are already drawn in for us. So here, in the first one on the left, very similar to the one we just looked at, the intercept here occurs approximately at 2.34. So let's just draw an arrow showing that. We're starting at an x1 value of 3. Again, we go up to the graph, which is the red curve here. We see where the tangent line, shown in blue, intersects the x-axis. So here's the tangent line, just labeling that with an arrow. That seems to intersect at a value of 2.52, so that becomes our x2. Again, we find the tangent line of the function at x2, and that's this new line right here that we're indicating with the arrow. It's getting really close to the function itself, so it's a little hard to distinguish, and it intersects at 2.36, so that's our x3 value. So you can see we're rapidly approaching the root, which appears to be at 2.34. Now let's look at this example on the right, so a slightly different function. Here we're trying to find again the root, which appears to be at approximately x equals 2. We're starting with an x1 value of 1. We follow up to our curve, shown in red. We find the tangent line, which is this line I'm just showing with the arrow. So we see where that intersects the x-axis, and that intersects at a value of about 2.5. So that's x2. Again we find the tangent line of the function at x2, and that brings us very close to the actual root, so x3 is very, very close to 2, and so you can see that Newton's method really converges quite quickly, so you get close to the root quite fast. Again, just to recap, what we're doing is starting in value x1, finding the tangent line to the curve at x1, Wherever that tangent line intersects the x-axis, that becomes x2, and we continue this process. Now, a word of caution. This doesn't always work, so watch out. There are times when Newton's method won't work, 
So let's say you had the following function. So we've got the root that we're trying to find, but let's say we're starting at x1 as shown. We find the tangent line to the curve, and when we do that, we end up at x2 as shown. Well, if we go ahead and find the tangent line at x2, it doesn't appear to be getting us any closer to the actual intercept we're looking for. Another problem would have occurred if we had started at x1 at the maximum of this function. That one would obviously be problematic because you'd get a horizontal tangent. So because it would be horizontal, it would never have an intercept. So the method wouldn't work in that case either. So you do have to be careful. It helps to start as close to the root as possible. You might wonder how you would know where the root is and how you might start next to the root. Depending on which course you're in, there might be different expectations by your professor of what you're expected to be able to do and know in this case. If you've studied something called the Intermediate Value Theorem, which is something you would have studied if you took Calculus 1 or Introductory Calculus prior to your current course, well then you could use Intermediate Value Theorem to help you narrow down the interval in which the root exists. If you've never taken any course that has covered Intermediate Value Theorem, well then you might check with your prof about how you should go about choosing x1 value. One possibility is that it might be provided to you in the question. Another possibility is that you might have to choose an x1 value randomly and then try a few iterations and see if they seem to converge to a value because Newton's method, when it does work, does converge rather quickly. So if you see the values getting closer and closer to some x value, that's likely the intercept. Whereas if they're jumping all over the place or don't seem to be approaching any value, well then it's probably an example where Newton's method might not be working. Again, the best strategy is ask your professor how you're expected to find the x1 starting value or whether it'll be provided. So just make sure you know that and what's expected of you. Finally, let's finish off by talking about the math and the formula that we're going to use for Newton's method. The formula is shown here, so xn plus 1 equals xn minus f of xn divided by f prime of xn. This is a recursive definition because the n plus first step depends on the nth step. So let's say you wanted to know x5, for instance. So that would be the x value after four iterations. Well, there's no way to just plug into a formula and automatically get x5. To know x5, you have to first figure out x4. To get that, you have to first figure out x3. For that, you need x2, and for that, you need x1. So this is a recursive definition. Each step depends on the previous one. And this formula actually comes about from slope of a tangent line. Now, how do we actually use this formula? What do we actually need? Well, you'll notice in the denominator, there's an f prime xn. So that means we're going to need to know the derivative of our function. So one of the very first things when doing a problem involving Newton's method is to differentiate the function whose root you're trying to find because you're going to need that in the formula. Once you've gotten that, all you have to do is plug things in. So if we let in our first iteration n equals 1, then on the left we'll get n plus 1 will be 2, so we'll get x2. That means x2 equals x1 minus f of x1 divided by f prime of x1. So x2 equals x1 we know. In the numerator we've got f of x1, that means we just take the x1 value that we're starting with and we substitute it into our function, that's all there is to it. In the denominator we take the x1 value we're starting with and we substitute it into the derivative we just found. Again, that's all there is to it. Do a little number crunching and you'll end up with x2. Now to figure out x3, you just do the same step again. So x3 will equal x2 that you just found minus f of x2 over f prime of x2. So you're repeating all the same steps but using your new value x2. And then once you have x3, you can figure out x4 and so on. So again, the key is all we really have to do to apply this formula for Newton's method is be able to find a derivative, which you should already know how to do, and then simply substitute in numbers into functions. And then basically everything is just number crunching and applying the process again and again. How many times do you apply the process? Well, in some cases, you're told to apply it a certain number of times in the question. In other cases, you're looking for a desired accuracy. For example, you might be told to find an approximation that's accurate to two decimal places. In this case, you just keep using the recursive definition and finding successive iterations until they start to agree to two decimal places. So finally, let's just go ahead and recap everything we've covered. Newton's method is a fast, useful method 
for solving complicated equations that arise all the time in a variety of disciplines. It's just based on finding tangent lines and seeing where the tangent line intersects and using the place where it intersects as your new x value and just doing successive iterations and that should help you approach the intercept that you're looking for, so that root you're looking for. It doesn't always work, so it helps to be able to start as close to the root as possible and just be careful to make sure things are converging so that you do know it's an example where indeed the formula is working. And to be able to apply the formula, all you have to be able to do is find a derivative, plug numbers in, and just do a little bit of number crunching. That's all there is to it. If you'd like an example of using Newton's method, well, there's a video for that as well so that you can see how the formula can be applied to get successive iterations to help us approximate a root.